If you're a video editor, you already know that smooth motion is fundamental. When it's off, everything feels cheap. So today, I'm recreating the animation from my recent video and showing you the entire process. But with a twist, we're giving it a Christmas touch. And since it's a special time of the year, I'm running a one plus one offer on editing shift. That means if you buy anything, you can grab a second editing pack for free. I wish you a Merry Christmas guys, and now let's get straight into Adobe After Effects. So we're back in software after a little break, so let's get straight into it. So first, let me just show you the comp settings, 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna hit OK. And the first thing you wanna do is head over to the round rectangle tool, and we're gonna create a shape in the middle. Let's recenter, we can rename to frame, and also I'm gonna change the color to white. I'm just gonna adjust the properties a bit, so I'm gonna check constraint proportions and let's do it like that, maybe change the roundness a bit. Then what we wanna do is create a background, so I'm gonna go to solid and you wanna pick that particular hex code. Let's hit OK, we can rename to BG and let's hit enter. I'm gonna drop it below and the next thing we need is the pointer. So I'm gonna head over here again and we're gonna pick the star tool and this time we just need to create a shape but then change the type over here to polygon. So once you've done that, make sure to change the color to black and hit OK and we can also recenter. So now we need to take that shape and turn it into a pointer. So we need to bring up that point over here. So in order to do so, I'm gonna move over to the Polystar 1, then right click Polystar Path 1 and convert to Bezier Path. So now if you hit G on the keyboard or just grab the pen tool over here, you're gonna be able to set a point and then just drag it upwards a bit. Right, pretty cool. Then I'm gonna take these two, double click and while holding control, I'm gonna squeeze them in. So this seems good enough, I'm just gonna change the scale a bit and also we can add round corners. So this is just gonna look a bit smoother. All right, now I'm gonna rename the layer to pointer and we can actually set the position somehow like that. So we kinda wanna imitate the pressing effect over here, but first we need to slide in the pointer from the left bottom corner. So in order to do so, we need position and rotation. So I'm gonna keyframe both values. So now I'm gonna move over to the beginning and I'm gonna drag it over here. Let's also change the rotation and you should have something like that. The next thing you wanna do is easy the keyframes, then go to the graph editor and we're just gonna create a peak on the left. All right, so this is nice and smooth. Then we need to create the imitation of the clicking effect. So for this, we need scale. So I'm gonna hold shift, click S and we're gonna create a keyframe. Now we need to move forward a few frames. I'm gonna decrease the scale and move forward again. And then we're gonna grab the first keyframe. So you need to copy and paste over here. So this is a nice clicking effect. I think we're gonna stick with that. We don't even need to easy the keyframes. And now whenever we're clicking with the pointer, we need to expand the rectangle. So what you wanna do is make sure that constraint proportions is ticked off. So I'm gonna create a keyframe for size, then move forward a few frames and we're gonna expand it. All right, so this is definitely too early. We need to make sure that this happens right after the click. All right, I think this is reasonable. And then we need to add bouncy movement to the rectangle whenever it's expanding. So for this, you need to head over to the comment section below and grab the expression I left for you. So now if I hold Alt and click on the stopwatch over here, I'll be able to paste it, then click away and check it out. So this is pretty cool. I would probably just make it a bit snappier. The next thing you wanna do is move the pointer over here because we're gonna reveal the Christmas hat. So with the help of rotation, we're gonna make it look like it's kind of revealing that hat. You will see in a second. So first let's take care of the movement. So I'm gonna make sure we're somewhere here and then I'm gonna adjust position, maybe move upwards a bit. And also we're gonna adjust rotation, maybe a bit lower. Yeah, I think this is gonna be good. So this is extremely fast. So I'm gonna expand it a bit, then go to the graph editor. And here we need to apply the mid graph, just like that. This is pretty cool, I'm just gonna adjust it manually a bit. So right at this moment, we need to actually add a null object. So what I'm gonna do is right click, go to new, null object, and we're gonna rename to pointer controller. Once we got this, we need to make sure that the time indicator is behind all the keyframes, and we're gonna snap our anchor point from the null object to our pointer. And in order to do so, you need to hold shift, and then with the pick whip, we're gonna attach it to the pointer. So as you can notice, it's snapped over here and then I'm gonna disable it and it's gonna stay like that and we're gonna do the opposite action, but this time without holding shift. So we're just gonna parent pointer to the pointer controller. All right, so this is gonna be perfect. Then we need to set keyframe for position and rotation again. And I'm gonna move over here and I'm just gonna adjust rotation like that and move it upwards, All right? So we're gonna have such an effect. Then what I'm gonna do is also apply mid graph over here we might need to make it a bit snap here. All right, this is pretty cool. And this is the reason we use the null object because otherwise we wouldn't be able to overlap the keyframes and the momentum would have to be stopped over here. 
So now we need to bring our head on the timeline and remember you got it all in the description below. So now we need to make sure to place this head over here. I'm gonna scale it down just to have it covered with the rectangle. And then we need to make sure to trim the beginning of the layer to the position of these two keyframes. So that way it's not gonna be visible in the beginning. So I'm gonna create a keyframe for position and also scale. And whenever the pointer is making the movement, we need to throw that hat away, just like that. Maybe a bit bigger. And also I'm thinking about changing the rotation a bit, like that probably, because later on we're gonna try to attach it to a rectangle. Okay, also I'm thinking about moving it a bit towards the right, and then we need to work on the timing a bit. So what we could do is actually use the mid graph again, and then obviously this head needs to go a bit later to make it more realistic. All right, maybe the scale should be lower down. All right, this is very fast. So what I'm gonna do is expand it. Then I'm gonna go to the grab editor and we kind of wanna make the peak gravitating more towards the left. It's not bad, but this time too late. All right, I think I'm good with this. Then I'm gonna close it down. All right, so the next step would be actually creating a movement for the pointer. So we kinda need to follow the hat. So this time we don't really need to create another new object, so what I'm gonna do is stick with the pointer layer. So what I'm gonna do is just adjust position a bit, actually we can do it like that. And then I'm gonna also play around with rotation. Let's see. So this is too early, so what I'm gonna do is extend it, and I'm gonna make sure to apply mid graph again. I'll go to the graph editor. Okay, let's see. Pretty good. Let's make it snappier in the beginning. Right, just tiny adjustment. So here we're slowing down with the movement a bit, which is good because the next movement is going to be pretty fast. So we kind of want to aim for the big impact whenever we're snapping the head with the rectangle again. All right, so what we need to do now is take that pointer over here and make it travel across the screen. So I'm going to create a keyframe for position in our no object in order to overlap the keyframes again. And now we don't really need to worry about the anchor point over here because we're not going to be rotating the pointer. So I'm gonna move over here, and then with the position, I'm just gonna make it travel like that. Right, let's apply the mid graph. Pretty good, I would probably just make it faster. All right, so now we need to make the hat follow the pointer. So in order to do so, we're gonna need to create a no object for this. So make sure the hat is selected, then I'm gonna right click, go to new, no object, and it's gonna show up right above the hat. So now the same procedure, we can actually hold down shift, then attach with the pick whip to the head. Now it's snapped over here, then disable and do the opposite action without holding shift. So now let's create a keyframe for position, then move over here and we can play around with the values. So it's somewhere in the middle. Now it would be good to actually align these keyframes. So I'm gonna make sure that the time indicator is here. Let's align and this should do. Let's apply the mid graph over here. Maybe let's take this keyframe a bit more towards the left then I'm gonna open up scale, keyframe scale, and move it to the beginning over here. Then I'm gonna scale it down a bit. We can also adjust position. Okay, then we're gonna again apply the mid graph. Then around this time, we're gonna keyframe size over here and we're gonna squeeze it back in. So let's do it like that. Okay, not bad. Then what you wanna do is open up the expression. We're gonna copy it. Then we're gonna move to the scale. I'm gonna alt key the stopwatch, paste it here. Then we're gonna keyframe scale, move forward and make sure to uncheck constraint proportions. So that way we're gonna be able to attack only Y. So let's maybe do it like that. Then I'm gonna move forward again and I'm gonna take the first keyframe and paste it here. All right, so this is already looking pretty nice. So now we got the problem that the head is not really following what we've done here. So what I'm gonna do is head over to our null. Actually, we can rename it to hat controller. And what I'm gonna do is take the pick whip and parent it to our frame. Just make sure that the time indicator was set behind all the keyframes. So as you can notice, it's pretty stiff over here. So we need to play around with these keyframes. So I'm just gonna expand them a bit. Okay, a bit better. Let's take this over here. All right, so the next thing will be just splitting the hat into two layers. The reason for this is that we want the hat to be behind the rectangle in the beginning and then in front of it. So let's hit Control shift d around this time and then we need to take that layer and put it on top okay not bad so this rectangle seems pretty empty so finally is the time to add the text so i'm gonna grab the type tool i'll type in holiday then you want to make sure it's in the middle a bit more towards the left 
and then before we do anything make sure to head over to modes and set the track mat to frame. So that way the frame disappears so enable it again but that way whenever you move the text it's not gonna be visible beyond the frame. So now at the very moment whenever we're clicking we need to reveal the text and for this we need to have also an expression. So make sure to hit you for the frame and take that expression from here and I'm gonna go over to holiday hit P all click the stopwatch and we're gonna paste it in our expression window over here. So now with that being done we need to create a keyframe for position. I'm gonna move it forward a couple of frames and I'm gonna drag it lower. Maybe it should be snappier. Then we need another word which is gonna be sales so I'm gonna duplicate holiday, hit you, then select both keyframes and this is important we're gonna have the time indicator on one of them and then when you change the position it's gonna change the position for both keyframes. So let's type in sale, then we need to obviously adjust it a bit. Alright, we should be good, but one important thing is offsetting the layers. So what I'm gonna do is have this probably two frames forward. Alright, at the very moment when the impact is happening, we need to actually create keyframes for opacity for both text layers. So let's hit Alt Shift T, move forward and change the opacity to 0%. Okay, this is definitely too slow, so we're gonna speed it up a bit. And then in the place of these two texts, what we're gonna do is create another text. So I'm gonna duplicate sail. Then I'm gonna hit you, probably delete these two keyframes. Just make sure the opacity is set to 100%. Move it forward, and we're gonna make sure it's in the middle. Here I'm gonna type in one plus one. All right, this is looking pretty sick already, but we need to make it more impactful by changing the color a bit. So the way we do it is heading over to the moment whenever we're clicking. So I'm gonna go to our frame and then I'm gonna create a keyframe for fill color. Then we're gonna move forward a bit. Actually, this keyframe should be forward too. And we're gonna change the color to something probably reddish. Something like that should do. Let's hit okay. Then I'm gonna copy the first keyframe, paste it over here, but it needs to be a bit later. And we're gonna copy that set and paste it over here as well. Okay, a bit later. So now at the very moment whenever we're connecting the head with the rectangle, what we need to do is duplicate our background. So I'm gonna hit Ctrl D and then I'm gonna head over to the layer, solid settings, and we're gonna change it to black color. Let's hit okay. I'm gonna hit new and then I'm gonna trim it to the position whenever we got the impact. All right, pretty cool. I would probably just fade it in with opacity keyframes maybe a bit later. Yeah, pretty cool. So that way we're gonna make this pointer disappear automatically, plus we got a pretty cool impact. So now the thing that will bring it to life the most is creating the movement for the whole thing. So we're gonna create new null objects that will help us create kind of a camera. So let's create a new null object, then I'm gonna rename it to all controller, actually all controller one, and then we need to connect everything to our all controller one, apart from the backgrounds and anything that has already a parent and link set. So this, this, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So now let's connect it. And now if we just play around with this, we're gonna move the whole thing. So the first thing I would like to do is probably just create a keyframe for scale, then move to the beginning and we're gonna zoom in. All right, now I'm gonna select both keyframes, hit F9 in order to ease, ease and we're just gonna create a peak on the left. All right, so this is pretty cool. Nice style movement in the beginning. So right at the moment of this keyframe, we're gonna create another movement, but this time we also need position. So I'm gonna keyframe and then I'm gonna reveal rotation and also I'm gonna set a keyframe for this. So now what I wanna do with all controller one is follow our pointer and the hat. So we're gonna adjust rotation and then we're gonna move upwards and a bit towards the right. Maybe I went overboard. Okay, now let's make sure to apply mid graph over here. So this is pretty cool. And then what we're gonna do is take these two keyframes over here, copy, paste, and let's see. All right, so this is gonna bring our camera to the initial position. So I'm just gonna go to the graph editor and I'm thinking about taking that peak more towards the left. All right, let's see how it looks with the motion blur on. So I'm just gonna turn it on everywhere. And this is really, really smooth. All right, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Make sure to check out the editing shirt because currently we got this promo, one plus one. So basically the cheaper product is for free. So if you buy Motion Essence, you're gonna get Motion Boost or Pro Edit Pack for free or imaginative outlines. Anyway, that's a wrap. Merry Christmas to you all. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. And if you're bored, you can check out the video on the screen.